Hello everyone and welcome to our video series that outlines every single tool in the MyCAD tool suite. Each week we break down one individual tool from the suite and this week we're looking at smart properties. Whenever we get feedback from customers regarding the MyCAD tool suite, the smart properties tool is time and time again the favorite tool of the bunch. You'll see that this tool has a lot of functionality and can really enhance your SolidWorks user experience. So we all know that the creation of properties is an essential stage in design. Custom properties are how you and your entire team can be on the same page when designing. And what Smart Properties does is it makes it possible to quickly create and modify a list of easily definable properties through a customizable data entry form for all types of SolidWorks documents. We can then use these properties to create bills of materials or control an annotation or to recover the value of a dimension as well as fill a title block. Our key features of the Smart Properties tool are customizable data entry forms, a sorted choice of property types, text, list, dimension, SOLIDWORKS variable options, date, etc. And I'll show you all of these options when we get into the tool. You can define a property based on condition or a character string or even a calculation. The Smart Properties tool standardizes the entered properties and applies properties to documents, configurations, weldments, cut lists, all of these SOLIDWORKS features. And the interface uses a simple and intuitive parameter setting, which we'll explore extensively. And we have the option to save and automatically name the documents. So let's take a look at how the Smart Properties tool works. So the Smart Properties tool is the very first icon in our MyCAD Tools toolbar. And when we click on it, our Smart Properties tool pane opens up. So let's take a look at this task manager. As you can see, it looks just like any other task manager in SolidWorks. Show Properties for, and this component of this assembly is selected, so there you have that. But we can change it to any other part just by clicking in the graphics area or using the flyout menu as well. I also recommend pinning down the Smart Properties taskbar, especially if you're planning to apply properties to many different parts. So once we have a component selected, then we have this general properties area. Here we have article number, description, revision, process, thermic process, surface process, and reference. Well, where do these fields come from? Well, all we have to do is go down to parameter settings all the way at the bottom, and that opens up our Smart Properties settings. And you can see right here under Properties, all of these general properties are the same ones that we had right on, on this side here. If we want to add a property, all we have to do is grab it from this side, the standard or advanced, and drag it over. We can place it in any orientation, and we can just type in the text that we want. Let's go ahead and call this property Buy Make to designate that we need to buy this component off the shelf or make it in-house. When I click Apply, then buy make shows up as a field that we can put whatever we want. Let's go ahead and put make. And let's add a few more properties here. I'm just going to put heat treated. And a revision. I'll update this to P16. And then if I were to click apply, those properties would be associated with that specific part. But before I do that, let's just take a look at what else we have here. We have some document properties. And these are just standard document properties that can be all changed at the document property level. We have the option to exclude fasteners. For instance, if we don't want to add any of these properties to the fasteners, then we can exclude them. We also have the option to remove all properties associated with this specific component or components if you select more than one. We're not going to worry about that just right now, but uh, we'll come back to it. Next, we have some configuration options. Right now, these properties would be applied to every single configuration in the document. But if we want to change it to this specific configuration, we can, or we can specify the configurations. Right now, we only have one, so that's not really an option. So we'll just keep it bound to this document. We can also select multiple components just by using the control select method. And you can see all of those parts show up under our show properties for. However, you can tell that our menu is a little bit different. If we go into our parameters, you can see why. Right now, the only properties that those specific components have in common are these four document properties. Let's say that we want to apply a specific template of properties to these specific components. Well, we can go ahead and use the templates that we have already, and those are all right here in the Smart Properties Templates English folder. And we can go ahead and select one. I'll select the Smart Properties part, open it up, and then all of these properties in that template show up, and we can apply it, and those will all be applied to those components. Now we have the option to put anything we want in these fields and have those properties show up. So thermic process, let's keep that heat treated. Enter in make here and change our revision to P16 again and hit apply. Now if I close this and open up one of those parts, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties. 
and you can see by make that property shows up right here. Our heat treated property shows up and our new revision as well. So similarly to opening up a template, we do have the option to save a template as well for future use. We can just grab a few of these and let's go ahead and change this to date. Let's add a drop down menu and we'll call it finish and leave that as metals. So all of our metals show up for finish and we can just add a couple more. Let's just call this example. And now if this is the preferred list of properties that you'd like added, you can save it as a template by saving as. And you can see right here, XML, it's saving as an XML template file. We'll just call it example and click save. Now if we cancel this, go back into the parameter settings and open that, it shows up just like so. So once we hit apply, we can go in and put today's date. And I'll just put anything in here. And since our mate mania assembly is chosen that it will apply every single one of these properties to every single component in the assembly. So we'll go ahead and click OK, close the tool and go up to file properties. And you can see those properties show up just like we expect. So now that we have all of our properties assigned, let's go ahead and open up smart properties again. And let's say that we were sent this part and it came with all sorts of properties, most of which we didn't need. And in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at what we do have here. We have all of these properties here. Let's say that we want none of them. Well, it's as easy as opening up smart properties. And then all we do is click remove. Once we hit the remove button, we are prompted to clear all properties for document and all configurations, just the document, all configurations, or just the active configurations. If we really want to wipe these properties, we use the top level, and that's what I'll do here. I'll just click OK, and now I'll close this, and when we go back into properties, it's all wiped. We have no properties assigned to this part or assembly, and we're basically starting from scratch, and we can go in through smart properties and add the properties that we would like. So a very powerful tool. Now I'd also like to point out that the Smart Properties tool works equally well in the part environment, not just the assembly or drawing environment. And it works very similar. If we go up to the Smart Properties tool, we can see that the whole part is brought in and we have the ability to add these familiar properties just like before. However, a lot of times when dealing with a weldment, then you have cutlass items and we can actually add custom properties to individual cutlass items. Let's say for instance that we want to choose this cutlass item here, which is these two beams. And we can just add an article number one, description, outside support. Give it a revision A, and we'll heat treat it as well. And then when we accept that, then those custom properties will be specific to that one cut list item. And we can show it by, by going to our properties. And you can see right here, our thermic process has shown up, our description and our revision has all shown up specific to that cut list item. So I know that the Smart Properties tool is a very comprehensive tool and I want to keep this as short as possible. So let's just go ahead and take a look at a few more of our options. So let's go ahead and take a look at those parameters again. We didn't mention much about the advanced properties that you can add, but they are options here, concatenation, conditional, calculation, etc. And all of these are just easily dragged and dropped just like before. And if you do want to delete one of these property fields, just go ahead and highlight it and hit the X and that will delete it and its children. We can add some specifications to each one of these properties, such as making it a required field, etc. All of these are options that you have at your disposal. We can also add Windows properties to SolidWorks files. Similar to the Batch Properties tool, we have the option to add Windows properties that'll show up if you'd like. We can just type that in here or use the drop down. And then under Parameters, we have a whole lot of different options that chances are you won't even look at. However, I did want to point out that all of this is here, such as general options. Again, this is similar to uh, the specifications that we had over here. You can change the date type and dimension type. We can have SolidWorks pull up a dialog box if we need it, and we can exclude any special characters. We have the ability to automatically rename the document, and we can do that based on the property name. And we have some filters here that will allow us to do that if we select it. And again, we can show a message if it cannot rename the document, such as if it's open in a different program. 
You can create a new document in the current directory when the property changes, basically creating a duplicate. And you can save in a specific location if you want that duplicate to be saved somewhere specific. Next, we have the location of our text files and the location of our XML template files. If for some reason you wanted to change the location of where those are saved to, you can do that here. However, I would suggest just leaving all of this as is. That way you don't have to go searching around your hard drive for where your XML files are. And we also have the ability to modify the increments or the units and some favorites and group options. And we can reset all. If we do hit reset all, then we're given a, a message here saying, are you sure you want to reset the smart properties options? Again, I would avoid resetting anything because you will lose any of the data that you worked hard on to establish earlier. So I know that it seems like we've just scratched the surface with the smart properties tool, and that's the case for the most part. However, most of the settings and the properties will be based completely on your working practices, and you can tailor the properties to fit specific requirements. But we'll leave it at that for now. If you do have any questions about the Smart Properties tool or any of the tools in the MyCAD tools suite, please feel free to email us at solidworkssupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.